Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report where I share my 40 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like and share these videos. Well, the week that we're about to embark is going to be epic in nature. We have over 900 releases of earnings reports. We have GDP and the FOMC meeting. Before I get into these details, let's just review last week's action quickly. We finally started to see some rotation begin in the NASDAQ as the index peaked out and traded in a sideways range. We finished down 1.3% with the S&P only down 0.3 and the Russell down 0.4. I've been talking about this leadership change and I will continue to keep this dialogue going as I believe this is an important part of the markets to watch at this time. Not only do we have a substantial amount of information coming out this week from a fundamental standpoint, I'm also seeing a continuation of a positive rotation in our database as we had about 1,500 new buy signals on an intermediate level, pushing the intermediate database to 65% bullish. I'll go through all the details here shortly. As we begin to see these earnings reports come out, the heaviest reports on Tuesday and Wednesday, along with the FOMC meeting. So we're going to be in overload this week. Most likely we're going to end up in a very volatile state. One of the things that you need to know is that the Fed already knows what GDP is. They already know all of the numbers. Their meeting that they'll be having on Tuesday and Wednesday will summarize what their next actions will be. There's still a ton of people dislocated in this economy. We're a long ways from fixing it. In fact, the GDP is expected to show a 35% drop. The previous quarter was only 5%, but this is going to be the crux of the entire shutdown of the economy. As we've been watching over the last several months, these reports keep coming in better than expected. I think it's impossible to come up with an exact number and just say it's going to be down 35%. If there's going to be a surprise, I believe it'll be a surprise to the upside. If nothing else, we're likely to see parts of this report come in better or there'll be metrics that people will point to that will ultimately be more bullish. On Sunday, we saw Larry Kudlow running around already pumping up the new Stimulus Act. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, the amount of information that we're going to have to digest this week is just going to be insane. Just be on alert. They're going to be posturing everything as positive as they can. As Jerome Powell begins his talk on Wednesday, look for an optimistic view of the economy opening up as we go forward. There's no way they're going to be pushing any kind of negative commentary out there. Now, I've talked about this before. I'm going to be watching for Powell to use these terms proactively and aggressively using their tools. Also, he keeps mentioning this one line is that they have lending powers, not spending powers. We'll see if he throws that line out there again. They're trying to avoid any type of moral hazard. The earnings reports coming out this week. There's a ton of them, as I mentioned. It appears that most of the companies are going to continue to give out some forward guidance, even if it's negative, like we saw in Intel and the delay of the chips the other day. On balance, expect to see these reports come in better than expected as well. Over many years, I continue to discuss the fact that the analysts are just terrible at predicting earnings, but expect the forward guidance to be very mixed and the key companies are going to put out a positive face. It. It's, it's in their favor to paint a positive picture. As we go through this week, expect Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to be the focus point for the markets and volatility. The other elements that are out in the marketplace are treasuries, the dollar, and gold, as we're seeing gold soar overnight. Let's go ahead and take a look at the charts and see what they're telling us for the beginning of this week. As we review the WaveTech database, there were several things that occurred. We did see some slightly negative rotation in the daily models with 325 cells on 1.2 and, and 281 on 3.2. So there is some net selling going on. I've been discussing over the past five to eight sessions that the Short-term database is way overdone, and what my expectation is that we will bleed off a lot of these symbols and start to see a rotation. 
Now, we did see substantial amount of buying last week. What's likely to happen is trades that have been on for the last 45, 50 days will start to roll over and the new trades will take over from the database as far as performance goes. The short-term database confirms to me that we're likely to see some consolidation and remain under 3280 and some of the key numbers I've been talking about in the technical area. We go over to the weekly level and you'll see that the weekly models got substantial amount of traction, 1,534 new buys on 1.2 and 148 on 3.2. Once again, we see the more aggressive model doing the buying. And many of the elements that are coming into play, once again, are the mid-cap and small-cap rotation. With the database moving up to 65.38% bullish, this is suggesting that there is a long ways to go before the market's going to roll over. I know a lot of folks think there's going to be some big disaster happen and the markets are going to roll over. This, the traction on this database is saying that's not going to happen. Not that we can't see a broad consolidation, but there's not going to be a collapse in prices with over 10,800 symbols in current uptrends. They're just not going to fail at that level unless there's some black swan event that we're unaware of. Just taking a look at the dashboard in the Portfolio Expert website, and if you don't have an account, you, just, you can set up a free account so you can see this. This configuration tells us that there's, we're seeing a rotation across all sectors. This dark green, which is showing some buying going on in virtually every sector, and down below, as we look at the groups, there's quite a few groups that are getting traction as well. This is very healthy, as this tells us that there's positive rotation going on. We're seeing a lot of sectors get hit on a broad basis, as well as many of the groups are seeing positive rotation. In spite of the Intel report, the semiconductors got the most traction, up 12.5%. Beginning with the S&P futures, overnight, the market traded down to 3192. It's rebounded back to 3216 with a high of 3223 so far in the evening session. But we're continuing to see PPMs remain stable and PPM1 is turning up again. We're at 0 0.21, 0 0.22, and 0.15. The PPM stand for price pressure momentum. It tells about the angle of attack of the trend. Now, our models have been long the future since 2847. This trade continues to hold in spite of this grinding and slight backfilling that we saw last week. As long as we remain above the 3160 level on a closing basis, this trade will stay on. Now, it's somewhat vulnerable if we see some downside this week. We're likely to see a lot of rhetoric around the backstopping of the economy, which should keep the markets reasonably stable. Looking at the cash S&P, we're seeing the upward slope that I was talking about over the last couple of weeks finally turn down, but the PPM2 is still at a 0.25, PPM3 is at 0.15. Anything above 0.25 is an uptrend. It also indicates that there is only a 40% probability for the market to decline below the 21 period moving average, which is 3170, which goes along with what I was just talking about on the futures around the 3160 level. Looking at the weekly graph on the cash, my expectations are that we'll see an S2, which is 3172, and a possibility of an R2 as volatility should increase with all the news that we have coming out this week. A penetration of 3170 would signal a move down towards the 3148 to 31. 28, which is major support. I mentioned this in last week's commentary that a move down to 3130 would represent a major buying opportunity. Looking at the overnight NASDAQ futures on a weekly basis, we did come close to hitting the S1 number at 10,302. The probabilities, just like with the S&P, are for an S2, R2 range this week which would give us a range of 10,126 to 10,781, as this market should continue to consolidate as the next several weeks unfold. This is the perfect environment for a sideways trading range. 
Next market to, to review is the 10-year Treasury. They continue to drift lower. We did see a close at 0.58, but the key elements to look at here is PPM2 is breaking through its first and second derivative, and that suggests that this market is starting to bottom. A move above 0.70 will signal a higher move towards 0.8 to possibility of 0.9. Looking at the market grid, the extreme this week is 5.04. I think we'll see an S2, R2 level in the treasuries as well. Next market is the dollar. I've been discussing this 200 week moving average. We are we approached it on Friday. That number is 93.84. It closed at 93.96. The low is 93.77. This is going to be a very key market to watch. A break under this level would indicate further acceleration. I discussed this on Thursday's video where our models are short on a daily, weekly, and a monthly basis. One thing that is starting to happen that we'll watch closely, PPM2 is starting to turn up, but PPM1 is continuing it in an extreme negative trend with a minus 0.61. That will suggest that there's substantial resistance overhead. We're not likely to get back above the 98.50 level at this time. On the monthly graph, we saw it trade through its extreme, which typically indicates that we're going to see some rebound back into the range as we finish this month. This is the final week of July. There's going to be some squaring up positions across the board. The final market that we'll cover tonight is gold. Now, gold has had a 1.2 buy signal since 1728, back on 619. This was the last signal. We're seeing some extreme acceleration with PPM1 at 0.64. PPM 2.40 and PPM 3. Taking a look at the market grid, the, the RXT extreme was at 1927. We're currently trading 1938. A close above that level would indicate a two to three day sideways action pulling back into the range. We'll see how it closes on Monday, but this could be a climactic move after the last five days surge to the upside. Looking at the market grid for the monthly, you'll see the RXT is 1945. The high has been 1938 overnight. So we're trading right at the extreme for July. So everything's maxed out at this point in time. But we are seeing amazing acceleration with PPM1 at 2.68, PPM2 2.11, and PPM3 at 1.05. This type of momentum suggests there's likely to be at least another six to 10 months in this trend before it will be close to topping out. Going to the weekly chart, you're going to see a sharp acceleration on PPM1, but also there are three objectives to the upside. I discussed these last week. There are 1989, 2108, and 2182. This suggests that the market is going to continue toward these levels. Typically, it will hit a minimum of 1989. We're not far from that number now, but the configuration with the PPMs on the monthly and the weekly suggests that there's a high likelihood that we'll move toward the 2108 to 2182 levels. This will complete the video for tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.